Hi, I'm David the Bruce. This is Steel, this show where we show all things in the public domain. And if you've been following the last few episodes, you know we are doing Annie Oakley starring Gail Davis, a series that ran on television from 1954 to 1957, significant because she was not married. And she was, she was television's first female superhero in a time when only white men could have cowboy shows. Along comes Gene Autry's Flying A Productions of Annie Oakley, starring Gail Davis who had been in a number of B films from the 1940s into the 1950s and had been on a number of um, uh, TV shows like The Lone Ranger and Cisco Kid and um, even um, Death Valley Days. But here was a TV show all for her. She became TV's first woman superhero and an incredible example for young girls. It is really amazing. I do want to say that uh, this Annie Oakley bears no resemblance at all to the Annie Oakley uh, of, the, of the famous Buffalo Bill Wild West shows. Not at all. And that's another story. And phew, there are some, uh, there are some um, um, similarities, though. Both Annie Oakleys shoot amazingly well with a gun. Both are about five feet tall. Both are about a hundred pounds. Both are tremendous horseback riders. And they both really have something to do with um, a pre-feminist culture. They were sort of like um, groundbreakers, doing things that others didn't. Annie Oakley, the real Annie Oakley, had it had an independent job. She was uh, the highest paid star in um, Buffalo Bill's show. She was the first celebrity that America ever had, first woman celebrity that America ever had, and she was an international hero. Whereas Annie Oakley on television was the first major and only <laughs> TV superstar that was a woman on TV. Um, now, the differences were very many. It's like everything else, you know. Um, Annie Oakley never lived west of the Mississippi, for example. Wouldn't have known what a town Diablo was like. And um, certainly didn't bring in bad guys. But be that as it may, you're in for a good ride. Pardon the pun. Here we go. Bullseye! Annie Oakley hits the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. change in 10 years, Tom. It's not going to be easy starting over. No, sir, I don't suppose it will be. I'm not going to give you a lecture. You're an intelligent man. During the years you've been here, I've learned to know you pretty well. You're not the sort to make the same mistake twice. You can be sure of that, sir. I've written this letter to an old friend of mine. If you feel like it, you can go see him. I know he'll do whatever he can to get you started off on the right foot. He's a sheriff at Diablo. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your confidence. Well, goodbye, Tom, and good luck. Goodbye, Warden. Yeah! Yeah! What alert do you think 
you're doing, Tag? Watch me beat him to the draw. Draw! Look at that. Right through the heart. Good shooting, huh? No, Tag. I wouldn't say that was very good shooting. What do you mean? I shot him dead, and before he could even get his gun up. Tag, I think it's about time you and I had a little talk about guns. In the first place, you don't use them to go around killing people. Well, that's what they're for, aren't they? Well, if I didn't know you so well, young man, I'd say you weren't very bright. An expert uses a gun to protect lives, not to take them. It's a defense weapon, Tag, now remember that. Well, how are you going to defend yourself if some varmint draws on you without you beating to it and kill him first? I'll show you. Pull that rope. Gosh! See what I mean? Sure! Is your uncle here? No, he isn't, Mr. Willis. He's out of town on business, but his deputy's around here somewhere. Something wrong? Well, I got held up again. That's what's wrong. Mm. Oh, here's his deputy now. Marty! What is it, Ed? Two men. They jumped me just beside of Eagle Rock and got away with about $8,000 worth of gold concentrate that I was bringing from the mine to the railroad station. Have you any idea who they were? What they looked like? Just the same as before. I couldn't tell. They wore masks. As they were going away, I took a couple of shots at them. I got the horse, and I think I nicked the other fellow's hat. These guys have fell off. Did you get his hat? No, I couldn't. About this time, the first zombie cuts loose and I had to take cover. And he keeps on shooting until the other fellow gets his hat and high turns it off into the rocks on foot. Still on foot. We got a good chance to catch him. Any men want to come along? Get a horse, Ed. Why, sure. to walk if this horse is going to drop dead on us. Well, I'm not walking. Not in this heat, I ain't. Well, if you think I'm... Hey, wait a minute. Stay here, Jim. Get out. I said get down. Next time I'll shoot six inches lower. Get going. I know that armor from someplace. I know that face. Well, let's get moving. This is one of them, all right. Look at that bullet hole I put through his hat. Where's your partner? What partner? I don't have any partner. I was held up back there on the trail and the fellow stole my horse. I don't know what you fellows are talking about. I was on my way to Diablo to see the sheriff. You're going to Diablo, all right, and you're going to see the sheriff. I don't know what it is you fellows think I did, but whatever it is, you're wrong. Maybe, but I don't think so. Now, wait a minute. Don't everybody go getting excited. Lofty will find them. He'd better find them. This thing is getting kind of regular. $30,000 worth of gold in the last month. Let's get out. Gosh, $30,000 worth of gold. What do you suppose those two babies are going to do with it, Addie? It's a good question, Tag. Something I'd like to find out myself. Maybe they look. I think it's about time you and I did a little detective work on our own. Come on, Tag. Hi, Phil. Hi, Phil. Hello, Annie. Hi, Tag. Say, Phil, do you know anyone around here shipping gold concentrate besides the Apex mine? Oh, there ain't much going out of here anymore. Hey, the Bolton boys are shipping some. Dan and Jim Bolton? Yeah. I thought their diggings played out a long time ago. What's on your mind, Annie? <laughs> Just curious. Thanks, Phil. All right, Annie. Hey, 
bet I know what you're thinking. I'll bet there isn't a grain of gold in the boat in mine. Come on, we're going out there and have a look around. Right. You stay here, Tag, and keep watch. I'm going to have a look inside that mine. Right. Remember him? Malloy. That's who he is, Tom Malloy. What are you talking about? The guy I took this horse off of, Tom Malloy. We did time together about five years ago. What do you reckon he's doing out here? I don't know. He's doing a long stretch for safe robbery. I thought he was still up there. What are you taking the saddle off that horse for? We gotta get rid of it. I don't want anything around here that'll tie us up with Malloy. That's a good idea. But we could keep the saddle. No use in losing that. I'll hide it where nobody will find it. Maybe you know you're trespassing on private property. That's right. But I was just looking for the two men who held up the gold messenger. What made you think you'd find them around here? Just a hunch, maybe. Yeah, we thought they might be hiding in that mine. Well, why don't you go ahead and have a look? I've already had a look. Tag, go get the horses. It's kind of dangerous to turn your back around here. Don't try it. I'd like to get a shot at them, too. There'll be other chances. Dan Bolton and his brother were mixed up in this thing somewhere. Why Dan Bolton? Well, I'll explain it while I make us some coffee. Come on. Of all the crazy ideas I ever heard of, you going up to the Bolton mine, you could have gotten yourself killed. Why, well, Lofty, I do believe you worry about me. Well, of course I do. But that's got nothing to do with it. You could have gotten Tag killed, too. Well, at least I gave that mine a good looking over. I don't believe there's a grain of gold in that place. Look, Annie, nobody can tell if there's gold in a mine by just walking in and taking a quick look around. Well, then where are they getting the stuff they're shipping out? Tell me that. Annie, the man we got locked up in there has been identified by Ed Willits. He's even got the hole in his hat that Ed put there. It could be a coincidence. I still don't think we've got the right man. But he admits being in prison for robbery. Gives us some story about the warden writing your Uncle Luke a letter, only he can't produce the letter. But he explained that the letter was in the saddlebag on the horse they took from him. Oh, the whole story sounds too fishy. I'm sorry, Annie, I just don't believe it. Oh, Lofty, your only trouble is you're just as stubborn as a mule. I am not. It's you just that... so. You got an idea set in your head and you just don't want anyone to change it. Now, look, Annie, you know that isn't so. Then why don't you send the warden a telegram and check? All right, I'll do that. Miss Annie. Yes? I heard you mention Dan Bolton a while ago. Yes, do you know him? We were in prison together. He served out his time and got out about five years ago. Well, that's about the length of time he's been around here. That fellow that took my horse. There was something familiar about him. I seemed to recognize his voice. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. And it was Dan Bolton. I could swear to that. Look, with your prison record, you're in a tough spot unless we can prove somebody else held up that gold messenger. 
Will you help me? Will you do anything I ask? Yes, ma'am. I'll be right back. I do for you. I've got a story for your paper. Good. What is it? Well, you can say this. It has just been disclosed that the man who's being held for the holdup of the Apex Mine Messenger is Tom Malloy, who recently escaped from prison while serving a term for robbery. Next convict, eh? Hey, that is a good story. Will it be in tomorrow's paper? It certainly will, and right on the front page. Thanks to you, Annie. You're welcome, Mr. Copler. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, oh, Tad, hold still. I'll be through in a minute. Oh, Annie, for their sakes. Just a couple of more pins. Hello, Annie. Good morning. How do you do, madam? Oh, it's Tag. Hey, that's very becoming. <laughs> that sells it. I won't do it. Oh, Tag, now look what you've done. I'm going to have to fit this all over again. Not on me, you won't. Oh, please, Tag, it'll only take a minute. I to take breakfast to your prisoner. Why don't you try it on Lottie? He's bigger than me. Hey, that's a good idea. Oh, no. Say, have you seen the morning's paper? No, not yet. Take a look. The man we got locked up in there escaped from state prison. No, really? Now, you see, Annie, a man's judgment is better in things like this. Well, I knew he wasn't telling the truth from the minute we nailed him. I'm sorry I argued with you, Lottie. I should have known that you're much smarter about such things than I am. Oh, I didn't mean that, Annie, and you know it. You're plenty smart about a lot of things. But dealing with crooks is a man's job. You can't be sentimental. That's right. And I suppose that's why you're such a good deputy sheriff. Lofty! Your prisoner escaped. What? When I came to bring him his breakfast, that cell door was wide open. I, uh, I guess it's kind of my fault. Kind of your fault. What do you mean? Well, I think I left the cell door unlocked last night. You deliberately let him go? Well, Annie, I hope you realize what you've done. You made me the laughing stock of the whole town. That man escaped from state prison. Lofty, I'd like to explain about You'll it. You'll have to explain about it later. Right now, I have to go out and find Tom Malloy all over again. Gee, Lofty's mad, Annie. I've never seen him act like that before. You'll get over it. Go on in and eat your breakfast, Tag. Okay, sir. It's Annie. Everything's all set. You sure you know what you're doing? Yes, ma'am. I've thought it all out. Good. Good luck to you, and be careful. Thanks, Miss Annie. I'll bring back that letter that the warden gave me. Well, did you get all this up? I sure did. I got some information, too. You know that Tom Malloy you're taking the horse off of? He wasn't released from state prison. He busted out. Yeah? And you want a real laugh? They got him locked up in the Diablo jail for robbing the gold messenger. <laughs> well, this ought to take some of the heat off of us. You know, I was kind of suspicious of that guy. When I knew him five years ago, he still had 15 years to serve. So he busts out, huh? Yeah, but it didn't do him much good. They caught up with him again. Wonder if I could hit you up for a little grub. I got money to pay for it. Well, if it isn't Tom Malloy. You made a mistake, stranger. My name is Smith. Cut it out, Tom. I'm Dan Bolton. Remember me? Well, I'll be dogged if it ain't. Dan Bolton, how are you? This is my brother, Jim. Hello, Jim. Howdy. I heard they had you locked up in the Diablo jail. You don't think I'm going to let any two-bit jail hold me after bringing out a state prison, do you? Nice, quiet layout you got here. Maybe we can do a little business. Yeah, what kind of business? Like I say, I got a little money and need a place to hide out. Sure, why not? Wait a minute, Dan, are you crazy? They're looking for this guy. 
I was an old friend. You don't think I'd turn down an old friend, do you? Take care of your horse back at the corral there, Tom. We'll rustle up some grub. What's the idea of letting an escaped convict hold up here? He's going to get us into a mess of trouble. Take it easy. We can use this guy. He's one of the best safe experts in the country. With what we've got on him, he'll have to do anything we say. Well, I still don't like it. Jim, we've got a pretty good setup here, Tom, if you'd like to string along with us. Nah. I don't know anything about mining. It isn't hard to learn the way we do it. What do you mean? Shut up. You talk too much. Tom's OK. Stop worrying about him, Jim. What's the deal? Well, we've got a gold mine, you see? Well, there isn't any gold in it. Two clients. No. Some of the mines around here have got lots of gold. They ship and concentrate down to the railroad station. But on the way, they're relieved of it. I'm beginning to understand. Gold concentrate isn't easy to get rid of. That is, unless you've got a gold mine yourself. Then it's easy. It just comes out of your own mind. Pretty smart. I wouldn't mind being in on a deal like that. You never could learn to keep your mouth shut, Dan. That's why you had to spend five years of your life in the pen. Relax, Jim, relax. So what's your idea? Well, when Jim went into town this morning, he found out there's another shipment going out early tomorrow morning, right after daylight. Being Sunday, they don't figure to be bothered, right? That's right. We can knock them over in Sidewinder fast. They won't be expecting us there. Sounds OK. Count me in. Well, it means an early start. Better turn in. In here? Right. Good night. Good night. Stove. You're not going to square yourself with a pot of coffee. I've been out combing those hills since early this morning. Annie, how could you have done such a crazy thing? What's your uncle going to say? Well, if it works out the way I think it's going to, he'll say I'm pretty smart. Want to hear about it? No, but I'll have the coffee. Wait, Lofty, you'll see I'm right. Trouble with you, Annie, is you're too trusting. Malloy's probably miles away from here by now. We'll never see him again. What's the matter? Keep talking. But don't look toward the window. Sorry, ma'am. What were you doing out there? Waiting for her to be alone so I could come in and talk to her. What happened, Tom? Well, I went up to the Boltons, all right. Well, did you get the warden's letter? I couldn't find my horse or my saddlebags. Still sounds fishy to me. I don't blame you for that. You've been right all along, Miss Annie. They're your men, all right. You mean they've been pulling these holdups? Every last one of them. Not only that, but they got another one planned for tomorrow morning. Well, I'll go up and bring them in. No, wait a minute, Lockie. You haven't got any evidence yet. You've got to catch him in the act. Yeah, that's right. You know where they're going to hold this messenger up? At a place called Sidewinder Pass. They found out he's going through there tomorrow morning at daybreak. I'll be there before daybreak. You go back to the cabin. I'll round up some men. Well, there's nothing in any of this stuff that'll tell us anything. The only thing I can figure out is Malloy took off because he was afraid we'd turn him in. Yeah, you fool mighty easy, Dan. I found this letter in his saddlebag. The prison warden to the sheriff in Diablo. Well, he didn't bust out. He was released, huh? That's right. He's a plant. He's working for the sheriff. And you had to talk your fool head off to him. Mm. 
They ought to have been here by now, Lofty. You don't recommend Malloy double-crossed you? No, I don't think so. Well, they might have got the messenger farther up. No, they couldn't have. Got the road covered all the way to the mine. Well, maybe they'll be along. This way, Tom. Are we going to Sidewinder Pass? It's that way. We changed our plans. Yeah, we forgot to tell you. We're going to knock over the bank in Diablo. But it's Sunday. Won't that be closed? Yeah, we figured on that. But you're pretty good at cracking safes. We got everything you'll need right here. It's almost time for Sunday school, and you're not even dressed yet. Wait a minute, sis. Those two Bolton brothers just rode in town, and you're escaped prisoners with them. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I saw them. Look, Tag, I want you to ride out the Sidewinder Pass as fast as you can and get hold of Lofty. Sure, sis. thing goes off, the whole town's here. We gotta be ready to make a fast getaway. Yeah, you got to get the horses and bring them out front. Wait there. the warden's letter. I just found it on him. Come on. Hey, Annie, I met Lofty right out at the edge of town. <laughs> Good work, Tag. Now hurry along and get dressed or Sunday school's going to be over. Go on. <laughs> oh, it's the answer to the telegram I sent the prison warden. Yeah, what does it say? Listen, and if you need a new deputy to send to Red Rock District, I believe Tom Malloy would be a good man for the job. <laughs> that telegram came a little bit late, didn't it? <laughs> 